Previously on The Business. All right, so uh, we have been talking about small businesses all of this week, and I thought it might be a nice uh, nice angle uh, to uh, to have a chat to somebody who's involved in a mobile food business uh, because they're popping up all over the place. And when I say mobile food business, I'm talking about a mobile kitchen, something that you can drive to a place and then you can cook some food and sell it to, uh, to people uh, who are walking past, perhaps they're at an event, uh, and it's becoming big business. It's starting to become quite competitive as well. It's not just burgers and perhaps some hot dogs that you're talking about either, but some rather uh, more flashy food as well. We've seen a lot of them pop up in Europe. We've seen a lot of them pop up uh, in the United States. Now in Cape Town as well, uh, they're starting to make an appearance. And, of course, in Gauteng. So uh, let's uh, let's turn our attention to the phones now. Joining us uh, from Balkan Burgers is Boyan Ivanovic. First of all, Boyan, thank you very much for joining us on the show this morning. Welcome to the business. Yeah, thank you very much, Ian. It's, it's a pleasure to be um, on the show. I, I would like to first of all ask you, just tell us a bit about Balkan Burgers. You're a mobile food business. What do you do? So uh, Balkan Burgers didn't start as a, as a mobile food business. We started as a kind of a casual market setup uh, each Saturday uh, in town at the Neighbor Goods Market in Bramfontein. And then um, we kind of... Um, expanded into this mobile mobile business. It was just the right kind of step forward for us to take. Rather than having a, a brick and mortar shop, we decided to go um, into mobile. And yeah, Balkan Burger is pretty much a traditional Serbian um, style hamburger, um, which we reinvented and redefined a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use these long rolls. We have this unique fold over technique. Um, we don't use ketchup, mustard, or mayo. We have our own sauce, and yeah, it's a bit different and very tasty, and people love it. You're making me hungry just talking about this, uh, Boyan. So I'm going to have to get off the topic quickly, otherwise you might find that this interview is cut short while I go and find something to eat. Uh, well, it's fine. We can <laughs> always come with our burger bites, man, and, 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 and serve some burgers. You know, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> now, listen. You you started at the neighbor goods market. That is a, a, a truly successful place to be. Uh, I mean, it's it's a foodie heaven, if you like. Uh, a lot of people know that they're going to get some great food there. Uh, from there, you obviously spotted a gap in the market. Now, this is what I'm particularly interested in talking about because small food businesses are popping up on wheels uh, and they're starting to make their way to places which are busy during lunchtime and sell food to uh, to the passing trade. What have you done with your mobile food business? So, um, exactly that. I mean, we've we've uh, that is, that was our vision in the beginning uh, is to is to serve lunch um, in different spots of Joburg. Um, um, uh, on on in, on this mobile platform, and the whole idea and how we came about, um, or came uh, uh, came about this idea was was the fact that investing a couple of hundred thousand into a, a classical brick and mortar, um, and having the success rate that that everyone knows, one in ten restaurants survive the first year, or whatever the uh, the statistics are yeah. was not kind of the risk that we were willing to take. So we were thinking with this mobile food truck, we if we don't kind of get the food traffic that w- that would make the business viable, we would just back up and, and move and try another. So it it really makes a lot of sense to go mobile, and a lot of uh, guys are are kind of realizing this. And I don't know if you know the story in the in the 2000 the the kind of the economic meltdown in the States, and especially in New York, a lot of gourmet chefs lost their, um, their, their work, right? Because a lot of um, restaurants closed down. Mm-hmm. And this is um, the idea uh, behind um, kind of the mobile food track, is these gourmet chefs taking their food to the people at a much more affordable rate than what it was being charged in the restaurant that they worked for before it closed down. So that is kind of the model that we kind of got very intrigued by, and and we we followed very much. What's your price point? What are you what are you selling a, a burger at uh, versus versus let's say for example a Wimpy or a Steers? Uh, uh, th- those are the two that come to mind at the moment. In fact, we had somebody from Steers on the show yesterday. Uh, what what kind of price are you are you pretty competitive or are you slightly more expensive? So I, w- I would say we are slightly more expensive. So the pricing point is between forty and fifty rand. 
But I think our quality um, is, is, is kind of justifies that pricing point because we do all our um, f- uh, mincing ourselves, the mm. bread, the, the sauces. I mean, there's a lot of effort behind the, the scenes that goes into creating this burger. We, we still don't have kind of the, 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 the big production lines that these, these guys have. And once we do, we will definitely bring the price down. But for now, sure. the pricing point is r- a little bit more than than what uh, your fast food stores uh, charge, yes. What about Johannesburg? Because I know Cape Town has suddenly had a, a, um, a, a great growth sp- uh, spurt with, with these, these mobile kitchens, if you like, uh, and they're, they're doing very well. There are a lot of alternative food s- sort of styles that are, that are popping up in Cape Town. Joburg strikes yeah, me as being um, the, the obvious choice, but where do you go? Because not a lot of Gauteng is walk. Um, in fact, I, 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 I hesitate to say it, but I mean, in Santon, hardly anybody walks. Yeah, um, true. So we, we are finding that very difficult. I mean, that is kind of something that we are, we are, we are making it up as we go along, kind of, that's yeah. what we call it internally. Um, and and it, it just takes time. And, and we, I think we are quite fortunate that we have quite a strong brand uh, recognition. We've been two years at the neighborhoods. We have, a, I mean, there is three to five thousand people that walk through the door of Naval Goods Market. So, I mean, we had great exposure. Um, but, I mean, someone who is perhaps thinking about this, would it, it, it's very hard to, to kind of build it up. And I think there are two models. There is the model of, of the, your classic New York food truck. You follow it on Twitter, and then we kind of tell you where we will be on, on certain days. Yes. And for that, you need a very, very huge following um, on your Twitter accounts and kind of on on your social media, so you need to be mm-hmm. very active on those um, on those uh, channels, right? And then there is the second one, which we are kind of hoping, um, with, which we kind of counting on, is the fact that of brand recognition. When people see a big red bus, they're like, ah, oh, there's the Balkan Burger, right. you know, let me go and, and and check it out. But yeah, I agree with you, man. It's it's very difficult. It's much more difficult to break into the street vendoring mm. in, in Joburg than it is in Cape Town, uh, especially because of, of the sheer size of this place, of the JMPD, of the bylaws, and, mm. and, and other kind of administrative how that, that people need to go through, as well as kind of attracting the, the people. But I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's some lessons that we, we want to share with other people. Um, Kind of, so they don't have to pay for the same schooling fees as what we have paid. Uh, well, in well, the past couple well of let's months, yeah. let's talk about that because that is that is an interesting point. Uh, I'd like to find out more about what you what what you actually had to do to set something up. What 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 car? What van do you use? How do you make a kitchen inside there? What does it all take? Yeah, so there, that's quite an interesting story. Um, we kind of had. Um, when I say we, I co-founded this business with my sister. Um, so my sister and I had this idea of what our food truck should look like, right? I mean, it, it's, we kind of based it on, on your classical uh, New York-styled uh, food trucks, yeah. kind of those postal vans, like quite squarish and, mm-hmm. and so on. Mm-hmm. And it was a really big mission, first of all, to find a vehicle. And we, it took us nine months, pretty much, to find um, this. And on the day that we kind of decided, no, it, this is hopeless, we will never find what we're looking for, let's just go <clears throat> with a Mercedes printer or a Iveco, we kind of found online exactly what we were looking for, right, uh, which was in Uppington. So, mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, you need to find the right vehicle. And the, the vehicle, depending on what you want to do, could be from, I don't know, a couple of square meters to, to a couple of tens of square meters. Mm-hmm. Ours is... Um, three by two, so six square meters inside them. I mean, so it's 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 quite um, it's quite spacious, right? And then the second thing was was converting this into a kitchen. Not a lot of people um, kind of do these things. There is a lot of uh, customized food um, trailers that you can get. And um, after speaking to a couple of people, we just decided to do it ourselves. I mean, right. what what how hard is it to install the kitchen, right? <laughs> well, that that proved very hard. <laughs> I mean, especially in, in six 
square meters, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so we did a lot of uh, design. So it took us about seven or eight weeks, actually, to do design in AutoCAD. We simulated different kind of scenarios within the kitchen where what should be. We changed it around. And then after the design, it was, it was time to implement. Um, so we, we found uh, stainless steel uh, providers. We found laser cutters. We found all these guys that we kind of tapped into to, to help us realize our vision. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, we had everything in 3D in AutoCAD, so it was quite easy for them to um, <coughs> kind of um, just cut to specification and then for, for us, uh, to install, but I mean, when I say quite easy, <laughs> it, was, it, it really, it really took some time. I mean, it uh, does like sound a, like a millimeter a, yeah. in this in this kind of environment counts counts a lot. It so sounds like a, a lot long of process. It really does. It was, yeah, yeah. Tell you, man, it's, and it was an iterative process. I, I think, besides the point that we designed and thought about a lot of things, even when we hit the streets on the first day. We found that a lot of things didn't work out, sure, so we had sure. to go back, kind of uh, adjust the, the the kind of the the inside. I mean, f- a simple example is that every road in South Africa is kind of slanted yeah. um, <laughs> because of the rain. That's right. right? That's right. So, yeah. so if you park on the on kind of close to the pavement, your bus will lean to one side. I mean, uh-huh. that is a classical uh-huh. thing that we didn't take into consideration. Mm-hmm. And stuff is flying out of the windows, and it was just a disaster, right? So it, it, it's a very kind of long design process, but, I mean, at the end, we, we kind of succeeded. I mean, and we have a, a quite an efficient nice little mobile kit. All right, Bayan, unfortunately, time is against us, but that is a great story, and I wish you all the best. I, I, I personally hope that, uh, that we see more of these, of these food vendors and that we see more, more uh, inventive types like you coming up with uh, amazing concepts and, uh, and doing some more great stuff. Uh, just quickly before we go, so that we can uh, know where to get a hold of you, are you on Twitter? Do you have a website? What's the story? Where can we yeah, find yeah. you? We are totally active on all social media channels. So on, on Facebook, you can find us at Balkan Burger Bar. That's B-A-L-K-A-N Burger B-A-R. Balkan Burger Bar. And on Twitter, the same, Balkan Burger Bar or Balkan Burger Bus. So if you are interested in, in finding more where we are, just follow us on Balkan Burger Bus. And then our website is balkanburger.co.za Excellent. Sounds great to me. Boyan Ivanovic, thank you so much from Balkan Burgers. We appreciate your time today. Good luck with the business, my friend. I hope that you uh, do really well and I admire your tenacity in, uh, in sloping roads and having to figure out how to cut laser, cut steel and figure out what car to use and, and all the rest. I hope that it, uh, it, that it pays you back many times over. Thank you so much, Ian. I hope to see you at at one of our stores, man, soon. I look forward to it. Maybe we'll pop into the Neighbor Goods Market. There you go. That is Bojan Ivanovic uh, from Balkan Burgers. You can go check them out on the web, as he mentioned there. This is The Business. It's brought to you by F&B Business Banking. The Business. Weekdays, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. On balls.co.za. Brought to you by F&B Business Banking.